guys you welcome to my channel so today we are going to be looking at uh, questions from our last topic and that is motion time graph so it's very very important we solve questions on it so that we are going to know how to handle jam questions on this particular topic in most cases like i will always tell you guys is that getting the explanation in class is not enough until you solve enough questions under that particular topic because no matter what the teacher might want to explain the teacher cannot explain 100 percent ways in which examiner will ask you questions on a particular topic but if you try your best to solve questions you are going to encounter questions that are difficult that it seems like it's not part of the topic so ability to solve those questions is what will expand your scope as far as the understanding of that particular topic am i making sense now so that's the essence of uh, coming up with the whole of the jam questions on this particular topic so without any further ado let's get started the first question we want to consider is from 1984 number one and the question states that i'm coming uh -huh, so so i can see it clearly now so the question states that the diagram the distance traveled by a particle starting from rest is plotted against the square of the time uh that is the, the square of the time elapsed from the commencement of motion the resultant graph is linear the slope of this graph is a measure of a initial displacement b initial velocity c acceleration d half the acceleration e half the initial velocity so which is going to be the right answer here absolutely let's see because there's nothing in the class that explain how you are going to answer this particular question because what is discussed in the class is that if you have a velocity time graph that is a velocity plotted against time the slope is going to be acceleration we won't talk anything about if you plot displacement against uh, the square of time or if you plot distance against the square of time we don't discuss anything like that and that's why i told you that solving question is very important now how will i approach this question if i happens to be a yx student sorry jam student so i'm going to attempt the question by breaking down this particular equation so the distance traveled by a particle starting from rest i need you to understand that whenever a particle starts from rest it means the initial velocity is equal to zero literally this is what they are saying if a particle start from rest you know we are told that it has a linear graph right so linear graph means straight like this and say the particle start from rest this is d and uh, this is time square so if i'm to look at the slope of this directly based on the explanation in class so i'm going to be adding distance over time square so this will just give me acceleration and uh, if you look at this now acceleration is there but is that the right answer if you pick acceleration at this point in time you are going to get it wrong why will you get it wrong let's see how it goes now when you when the body start from rest the initial velocity is going to be zero am i getting this now so if the initial velocity is zero and as you can see from the graph you can see the initial velocity is zero so the possible equation for the distance is going to be either you have velocity to equal to 80 or you have distance to equal to half 80 square or you have v square to equal 2 as so these are the possible equations of motion that you can have when a body starts from rest are you getting this now so whenever a body starts from rest the possible equation of motion to solve anything about that body is going to be v equal 80 s equal 1 over 280 square 
um, v square equal to a s. So the question now is that which one has to do with distance and then pi square? You just see that it is the one at the center that has to do with distance and then pi square. So I'm going to write this down as s equal 1 over 2 at square. Can you see this now? Now this is the graph plot, right? So if you plot a graph, a linear graph is given as y equal mx plus c. Where c is the constant that is intercept and then x is uh, the variable on the x axis and uh, y is the variable on the y axis. So if you look at the y axis of this question, you see that the variable there is s which is distance. So y is equivalent to s. So y is equal to distance. Are you getting this now? And then x is equivalent to the uh, quantity that uh, was plotted along the horizontal axis and that is t square. So x is equivalent to t square. Then c, is there any intercept along the y axis? There is no intercept along the y axis. So c is going to be zero. And if you look at this place also, you see that there is no c. Now, m is equivalent to what? By comparing this, you see that m is equivalent to 1 over 2a. Have you seen this now? So, and the question states what? The distance traveled by a particle starting from rest is plotted against the square of the time elapsed from the commencement of motion. The resultant graph is linear. The slope of this graph is a measure of half the acceleration. You can see this is the slope of the graph here half the acceleration so if you have gone by just the definition the explanation we have in class this would have been the answer you are going to choose and jam blue that you are smart that is you are intelligent intelligent one is going to go for acceleration of which it is part of the option but the smart ones they are going to go for half the acceleration i believe you understand the explanation so that's just that about us so let's move to the next question now so what's the next question so question number two that we're going to be looking at is 1995 question number six 1995 question number six and the question states that the velocity time graph of a body moving in a straight line and decelerating uniformly to rest is represented by so this is another thing that students always find difficult to answer that is whenever objective question has to do with a uh, graph you only see it as something difficult to do but most tell you sincerely it's absolutely simple and you are going to see that it does so look at this now the velocity time graph of a body moving in a straight line and decelerating uniformly to rest is represented by so what this simply is uh, what this uh, graph is telling you is that this question is that look for the graph that can represent the motion of a body with a retardation that is represent a body that is decelerating with a graph that's basically what this particular question is all about so how do i solve this remember when you are in class we say Whenever you plot the graph of velocity v against uh, the time t, so the slope of the graph is going to be acceleration. And how do you know that the body is accelerating when it's moving? If you have that, the body now is moving upward. Sorry. So if you have that, the body is moving like this, that is the axle, the velocity is increasing. So if you look at this now, you get to see that the velocity is doing what is increasing. And increase in velocity means that the body is accelerating. But acceleration is the opposite of retardation. So retardation is going to be that the body velocity is reducing. Are you getting it now? So if I want to represent what that the body is uh, reducing in value i have to represent it such that i will have something like this so i'm going to have this so you can see now that the acceleration that was increased to this point is now decreasing back to where it started from so if you want to represent retardation on a graph 
then it's going to be a negative slope since uh the positive slope of velocity time graph is going to give us acceleration so the negative slope of it is going to give us a uh, retardation and then option c is what represents a uh, retardation you can see this is a negative slope i believe you understand that now all right so let's move to the next question here so here is the next question and i want to explain something so important to this question the question is from 1989 question number five the question says which of the following graphs represent motion with uniform velocity so which of the following graph represents motion with uniform velocity guys okay how do you know that a body is moving with a uniform velocity so that should be the first question that will come to mind a uniform velocity motion is a motion with constant velocity uh, it can be produced from uh, a non sloping line I get where I'm coming from now. So, if you have a non sloping line, you can use this to represent what? A uniform velocity. Are you getting where I'm coming from now? So, when you look at this now, if I look at this graph right here, from what was explained in the class, you see that this one has a negative slope. So, automatically, this can be the answer. If you look at this now, this one has a positive slope because if I take this down like this, so this cannot be the answer either. So when you look at this one also, it has uh, a positive slope, only that it has an intercept along the horizontal axis. So all of these lines are sloping lines. Are you getting this now? So a line that represents a uniform motion or a motion at rest is what is a non-slopy line. A line with a zero uh, a line with zero slope. Yeah. So this is the correct answer to the question, option D. Do you understand that now? I think we explained this in the class. So let's move to the next question, which is going to be our, okay? So this is the next question here. And what is this question all about? The question says from the velocity time graph shown above. The question is 2012, question number five. 2012, question number five. Find the velo uh, from the velocity time graph, shown above which of the following quantities cannot be determined so the question here states that from the velocity time graph above which of the following questions cannot be determined so all right so now let's look into that now from the velocity time graph shown above which of the following quantities cannot be determined so how do you know the quantity that cannot be determined here is to be able to what to analyze this graph very well if you are able to analyze this graph, then we can tell you the quantity that cannot be determined with this. Now, if you look at this, you get to see that um, motion takes place twice on this graph, year one and also year two. So the kind of motion that takes place here, because this line is a non-word slopey line. It's non slopey line, that is a line whose slope is equal to zero. Like I explained in the previous question, it represents what? Uniform, uniform uh, velocity. And when you have a uniform velocity, a uniform velocity is what gives us zero acceleration. And when you look at this one, this one gives us uh, a negative slope line. Abby? A negative slope line represents the opposite of acceleration and this is going to be deceleration I get this now so this is what deceleration so if you look at this graph very well you get to see that we cannot determine anything that has to do with acceleration so it means if you look at this graph now it means we can determine uniform velocity and if we can determine uniform velocity, it means we can determine initial velocity as well. So it means A and B cannot be the option. I guess because these two can be determined. And when you look at this now, total distance traveled, you can calculate for the total distance traveled because you can look for the area under this first graph that is under A. You can also look for the area under B. And adding A and B together, that will give us the total distance covered. So it means we can determine this. So since acceleration is already equal to zero, it means the one that we cannot determine is acceleration. So 
the word initial here is just to what confuse you so in order for you not to get confused just analyze your question like this and this will be the correct answer initial acceleration all right so let's move to the next question